Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pastoral Thoughts Podcast. This is your host, Jack Young. And today in studio, once again, is Brother Jose Rodriguez. And today on the podcast, we are talking about UFOs, aliens, and the Christian. And so this is an interesting subject, that is for sure. And maybe uh, you think, man, we have gone off the rails, gone off the deep end. Um, But this is topic is important and why is that brother jose well um if i may i'd like to start out with reading um first peter chapter 3 verse 15 we're told to sanctify the lord god in our hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear And just recently, I was visiting a church um, in Buffalo, and um, I asked the preacher his thoughts on this particular subject. And his immediate response was that as he was witnessing to a few teenagers, that was their question to Mm -hmm. him off the blocks. They said, what they asked him, what do you know about UFOs? And um, so... Uh, and the only reason why we're getting to know about this is because it came out in Fox News that the Congress has now told the Pentagon. In fact, tomorrow, tomorrow they're supposed is to come a big out. day. Yes, sir. They're and supposed that to come is, out with <laughs> for those of you uh, watching or listening. That's um, June twenty fifth, tomorrow. That is correct. There's going to be an information dump demanded yep. by Congress. Absolutely. And one of the reasons why Congress is moving on this is because Congress do, does, it's, it's supposed to be the people's house. And, yes, sir. Um, people are demanding answers for all these UFO sightings. Absolutely. And there's approximately 20 million people in the United States of America that have seen a UFO. Uh, and if you've, if you've seen a UFO or had an encounter, <laughs> yeah. let us know. Email right. us. We, I'd love to hear your story right. about this. Uh, and um, you personally have had some i might have been either eight or ten years old years ago uh, uh we were just fooling around in the house our parents were out and um so we just decided to look out the kitchen window our our our, our, our porch and our kitchen were connected the glass all over the place and certainly to to my left um at about 10 o'clock position there was this bright orange orb and it would not change color although it would change in intensity Mm -hmm. and we just knew that not to be anything known to us as a plane or helicopter or anything was a solid color and it moved ever so slowly i believe it was moving um from uh south uh northward toward like towards a lake it was going Mm -hmm. left to right and uh, sure enough um from that moment on, as far as I'm concerned, me and my brother, we saw yeah. what, what the world refers to as a UFO, although right. I think they're greatly defined in the scriptures. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I remember talking to my old roommate, Greg Roller, uh, and he was telling me before he got saved that uh, he would wake up and half conscious in the middle of the night and sense a presence in the room. He'd be paralyzed. He couldn't move. Okay. And if you uh, talk to ab- abductees, every one of them had that common experience. Exactly. And uh, I remember saying to him uh yeah i i get that i i've had that happen many times and um he said still yeah. you still have that mm-hmm. and uh the thing was i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't saved at the time so he was shocked that a christian could mm-hmm. still have that experience of being in a room with another being not being able to move being paralyzed i'm amazed that you should bring that up because we haven't we've we've been talking about this subject for a while but um, and I and, and I shared with you that um, my brother, my older brother, and I we saw that orb, that UFO, and um, but as a child, and I was around the same age, mm-hmm. I had that very same experience, where I knew there was a presence in this room, and it was multiple. There was a, just a loud whisper, mm-hmm. and I could not exercise anything that I wanted to do. I was just frozen solid, completely awake. Um, there's a discussion that they call that sleep, um, paralysis, Mm -hmm. but I don't know if it equates the same because I knew there was a presence. I could hear it. Mm -hmm. I was fully awake. And all I could think of, 
I can't wait till dad gets up, turns on his cigarette, look, turns on the light, and this thing will be gone or go away. For whatever reason, I, and it's exactly what happened. He would get up a certain hour of the day to go to work, and uh, yeah. that's, how it, that's how it took place. He would come down the stairs, turn on the light, and light up a cigarette and start reading his newspaper. But, um, man, I'll tell you, it was a very scary moment because I just couldn't. I wanted to scream. I wanted to holler out, and I couldn't get any attention, or I couldn't move at all. Nothing. I couldn't exercise any volitionally. I couldn't do anything. Yeah, and so we we mm-hmm. know that these sightings have been going on for yes, a long time. Of course, probably in America uh, from the twenties and then into the uh, into the forties. Of course, nineteen forty eight was Roswell, New Mexico, uh, and then from from then on, um, you know, these sightings have been going on in the United States of America, but then also worldwide. It's just been a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and I know that in uh, up till recent times, any congressman or person in Washington, D.C. to bring up UFOs, they were looked at as a kook. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now it's very mainstream. You have um, uh, prominent senators like Senator Marco Rubio. Right. Uh, he's, he's demanding to um, seize part of the Intelligence Committee um, evidence that the military has had for decades mm-hmm. that has been suppressed and hidden, probably for very good reason. They're right. trying to figure out if, if another country has this technology, but it's so far past mm-hmm. what we have. We, we, you know, even these pilots and stuff that see this believe that this is extra uh, terrestrial mm-hmm. or more specifically mm-hmm. that these uh, creatures are interdimensional they don't come right. here from uh, outer space right it took us three days to get to the moon and i understand like the first star mm-hmm. in our solar system if we went the same speed that it took them to get to the moon it'd take one hundred eighty-five thousand years mm. and so space yeah. travels pretty much beside the question it's pretty much impossibility to you have to move pretty quickly uh and you're correct. Uh, it seems to me, and I think it's obvious, the consistency is is that these these uh, vehicles and these creatures are able to move um, and in, in tremendous speeds. Um, they're able to disappear at will. They mm-hmm. materialize. And angels have been doing this kind of thing forever when you read through your scripture. there's So there's no new thing under the sun. No. Um, but um, but if, I think the world is becoming aware of this now, or at least if, willing to talk yeah. about it. If I get you to take one scooch closer to that microphone, okay. We're used to pulpit mics, so a pulpit mic you can be uh-huh. like you know pretty far away. These ones are kind of like radio, you know. Um. That's how you get that nice rich voice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but uh, so these yeah these um, beings like for instance mm-hmm. abductees, uh, they come through the walls. People right. say right, yes, sir. They'll they'll go as fast as they came, mm-hmm. uh, and then also these pilots they'll see that they'll see these creatures, these uh, ships. They'll dematerialize, or in front, they'll just right in front of them. Yep, disappear. They're right. just gone. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a book that I read, and I can't think of the name of it. It's on my Kindle, uh, but a fellow was looking at you know the, with the Freedom of Information Act, the Defense Department, the DOD um, had a a special group. And they were the original men in black. Mm -hmm. And um, they dated from the 50s and onward that if you had cited, uh, you know, and this is during the Cold War. Mm -hmm. So they're going to try to find out what is going on. Does Russia have something, uh, you know, that Mm -hmm. we don't know about? Uh, But if you had some sort of a sighting at your house, these men would show up. They're very kind to you. They would Mm -hmm. say, okay, you know, when did you see it? What time? Uh, well, it's been appearing, you know, on Friday nights around two o'clock in the morning. Okay, well, uh, we'll be here, and they'd come sit with you in your house, black suits on, uh, and they would sit there and report. And so, with the Freedom of Information Act, these uh, the DOD department there, they determined that these beings were they, in their words interdimensional absolutely yes absolutely and so they're coming from another dimension they're mm-hmm. appearing and then they're disappearing so tomorrow uh you know the military has been releasing a lot of these videos yes sir tomorrow there's going to be information dump millions of americans have seen these things um and now uh, it was underneath harry reed that he op- gave 22 million dollars 22 million dollar budget for that study right uh, and, and so the military mm-hmm. to disassociate themselves with mm-hmm. uh Green men from Mars. Right. They are calling this uh, department the UAP department, mm-hmm. unidentified aerial phenomenon, mm-hmm. and um, so it's a it's a really a big deal, uh, and 
do we find this stuff in Scripture? I mean, do we have a scriptural answer for this? Well, um, yes. Uh, as we're told in Ecclesiastes, there's no new thing under the sun, and the Bible uh, completely defines them. I think one of the greater, what, what, well, certainly Genesis chapter 6, mm-hmm. um, the world calls them aliens. The Bible calls them the sons of God. Right. And this is, this is what's really interesting here, if there's ever been a controversy on what that really means in Genesis chapter 6, is there's two, there's two uh, streams of thought here, that these yeah. were men renowned descendants of Seth. Yeah, they, these were godly men, and they, the they saw that, you know, those you. ungodly yeah. women are so beautiful, I can't help myself, and they <laughs> right. all fell into yeah. sin. But nevertheless, yeah. you cannot, exp- where did the giants come from, Adam and Eve? Were yeah. the giants, they didn't give birth to giants. Not of renown. So, exactly. And, so. and also, mm-hmm. you know, I'll say, you said there's nothing mm-hmm. new under the sun. Right. So a lot of th- times people think, well, you know, that's something that Peter Ruckman made up or something <laughs> like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got Josephus mm-hmm. right here uh-huh. behind me. Uh-huh. Uh, his works there, my mm-hmm. friend Josephus. And he lived uh, before the writing of the New Testament. And you read you read his account from Genesis. He will tell you that the scholars of his day all believe that Genesis chapter number six uh, that these that demonic beings Absolutely. intermingled with the human sure. race. Yeah. Now I've got some mm-hmm. verses about that. Mm-hmm. Here's what Jesus says: um, Olivet Discourse, Luke chapter number twenty one. He says, "And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth." Distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming to earth, for uh, for the powers of heaven shall be mm. shaken. Mm. And, um, you know, if you watch ancient aliens, they're going to throw mm-hmm. you way off. Mm. Uh, but all these ancient civilizations do have uh, stories of heavenly creatures. Now, they will, you know, now... Ancient aliens, they, mm-hmm. they have an agenda, and that's that these creatures came somewhere from a galaxy far right. away. Mm-hmm. But but none of these none of the ancients believe that. They just believe that they came from the heavenlies exactly. and intermingled with mm-hmm. them. And so there's a lot of verses. You want me to do the verses on um, sons of God? Um, well, certainly. Or you uh, got them. Uh, we can do that. Uh, we, uh, do you have them already? I got them right here. Yes, chapter and, six. And so so here, here's mm-hmm. in the New Testament, and here mm-hmm. gives a little, you know, and okay. most of the New Testament is commentary in the Old Testament. And mm-hmm. um, in Jude 1, 6, and 7, the mm-hmm. angels which kept not their first estate, but right. left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these angels gave them himself over to fornication like as unto Sodom and Gomorrah yep. and they were and these angels were put in everlasting chains in the bottomless pit mm-hmm. so second Peter 2 4 and 5 uh-huh. God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not in the flood upon the world uh of the ungodly. Uh, it says, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Mm-hmm. So this was something that happened in the days of Noah. These angels sinned. We know there's fallen angels on the earth right now, but there was angels of God that did some sort of special sin back in the day of Noah, and they're in chains in darkness. Now, here's an interesting verse, mm-hmm. uh, and this is one of the most important verses in the Bible, Genesis 3.15. So you see the fall of man, then you mm-hmm. see the redemption plan mm-hmm. right in Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Now, when we see her seed, we say virgin-born son of God, because right. women do not have seed. Exactly. So her seed... It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. But you know, we will we will talk about her seed. That that's the, that is the virgin born mm-hmm. son of mm-hmm. God prophecy mm-hmm. right there. Right, and I think from that time forward, um, th- um, Noah knew about this. Um, Abraham, by thee, all, all the nations that's of the, the earth shall be blessed. Mm-hmm. And Abraham believed God and was counted unto him for righteousness because he knew the Messiah was going to come through him. Yep. So did David, mm-hmm. but also so did the fallen angels. So the best way to get rid of the Messiah is pollute mm-hmm. the human race. You got it. And here's a part of that verse that most people ignore mm. completely. And I, God's talking to the serpent, and mm-hmm. I will put enmity between thy seed and her seed. Mm-hmm. It's talking about Satan's seed. Right. Now, we'll, we'll go mm. preach her seed all mm-hmm. the way. You know, we'll take mm-hmm. that one to the bank. But it says thy seed. 
So Genesis 6 talked about that. Mm -hmm. It came to pass, and men began to multiply upon the face of the earth. Daughters were born unto them, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and took upon them wives, all of which they chose. And so here... Here in here, right in Genesis chapter number six, could read on farther down to mm -hmm. about verse number twelve. Mm -hmm. There was men of renown in those days, and then God decided to destroy the world with the, with the flood. First um, Peter three eighteen through twenty. For Christ had been once offered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Mm. So some people say, well, he went down to hell. I mean, why would you go tell mm -hmm. a bunch of lost people that are in hell <laughs> and preach to them? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But here's who he preached to. The mm -hmm. spirits in prison, and it says, by which he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which were sometimes disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing. Mm -hmm. So again, these spirits down there, mm -hmm. they did something in the time of Noah. And then you got Job several mm -hmm. times talks about the sons of God. Right. So Genesis 6, mm -hmm. sons of God saw the daughters of men. Sons right. of God go up for uh, mm -hmm. God in heaven, mm -hmm. Satan also with them. It talks about the sons of God shouting for joy mm -hmm. at the foundation right. of the earth mm -hmm. in Job 38. Mm -hmm. And then in the end times, here's a prophecy. And uh, we're in the book of Daniel on Sunday night. We just... Um, it did the first, I think, 38 verses of Daniel mm -hmm. in sermon number one out of Daniel chapter number two. Um, sermon number two out of Daniel chapter number two is going to be the ABCs of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So that's Nebuchadnezzar's mm -hmm. image right. there. So you got gold, and that's Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian Empire, silver, Medes and Persians, uh, bronze, the Greeks. Then you have the iron, the Roman mm -hmm. Empire. We mm -hmm. still have remnants of the Roman Empire, our mm -hmm. jurisprudence. Mm -hmm. I mean, even look at the architecture. A mm -hmm. lot of the government principles are from Rome. Uh, and then you have the iron mixed with clay, mm -hmm. and this would be the last empire the antichrist empire and it says this about the antichrist empire and daniel 243 and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with clay they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men mm. Mm. yeah why, why we're that talking about seed again of men especially yeah who are these to mingle with the seed of men? Right, right? but they shall not cleave mm -hmm. one to another, even yeah. as iron mixed with clay. Mm -hmm. And then in Revelation chapter number 9, during the tribulation, the fifth angel sounded, uh, and I saw a star fall from heaven, which mm -hmm. is all many mm -hmm. times a reference stars are to right. these sons angels, of God, to these absolutely. angels. Yeah. Uh, fall from heaven onto earth, mm -hmm. and to him was given a key to the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. So it's like Christ saying, okay, go, go get your boys locked down mm -hmm. there in prison. Mm -hmm. And he opened the bottomless pit, you remember those angels in everlasting chains? Mm -hmm. There rose smoke out of the pit, as smoke of the great furnace, sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and then all this all these demonic beings come about the face of the earth. Now, one thing you gotta remember about angel, uh, he is not regenerated. He's not given a new nature. So if you're not regenerated, mm -hmm. you're gonna commit the same sin Absolutely. that you did. Before. And that's what you have exactly in Matthew chapter 24. In Luke 17, it talks about that the return of Christ will be provoked by what caused that destruction the first time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like in the days of Noah. As in the days of Noah, As so the days of shall Noah. the coming of the Son of Man be. So exactly. we need to look at Noah's days. Mm -hmm figure out what that was like, and that's going to be what the end times well, are like. Well, Luke 17 is a little bit more detailed, uh, verses 26 through 27, as it relates to what was going on. Uh, certainly in Matthew, it talks about giving and marriage and what have you, but it's the same decadent behavior of Sodom and Gomorrah in Luke chapter 17, and that's what you read. So when you look at the day that we're in, uh, with all of this decadence that, mm. and by the way, the ultimate liberal is the Antichrist. Yes. When yes. you make that reference in Isaiah, mm -hmm. they'll no longer be called liberal or nor churl, and it leads right into the talking about the, the Antichrist. So liberalism seems to embrace all of it. Yes. Transgenderism. Anything to do with strange anything flesh. Anything to do with sexual perversion. And strange flesh, yeah. And strange flesh and, and you, gravitates to that. And you end. see, like, mm -hmm. if you you want to study, um, a very interesting thing is that all these ziggurats 
in the different parts of the world, they all have the same technology. And uh, whether they were pre-flood or right after the flood, I mean, there was shared technology in South America and mm-hmm. Egypt and all these different places. And they worship demonic beings. Absolutely. And one of the yeah. ways, like down the Aztecs, Always. sometimes they they would they did this human sacrifice where they could pull the beating heart out yeah. while it was still beating. Uh, but incredible. they would sacrifice as many as 50,000 people in a mm-hmm. day. And their babies. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so when they sacrificed all uh, these people, they would open up the portals mm-hmm. uh, and have some sort of interface with demonic Absolutely. beings. Yeah. And I truly believe that they were in contact with mm-hmm. some sort of demonic power. There's no and, doubt. And that's what that worship system was about. Mm-hmm. So today you have a culture of going after strange flesh yep. and then also sacrificing babies. Absolutely. And then, mm-hmm. um, you know, selling of baby parts, man, that's a big business. It's incredible. And here in the state of New York, um, you can bring a baby to full term. Yes, sir. And then, you know, the governor of Virginia, you know, he said that, that you know, this babies could be born and then the doctor and the mother would uh, determine whether or not it was viable. Mm -hmm. So you could have a living baby outside the womb and the mother and the doctor say, this baby's not going to live. Right. Well, I understand. You remember Planned Parenthood was buying uh, baby parts for $50,000. Well, the more mature the fetus is, the more that these babies are worth. They say, now China has labs in the United States and they're kind of off limits to uh, the United States government. Mm. But different labs, they'll offer a million dollars for wow. a living hmm. baby. Mm-hmm. And if you want to look up something interesting, look up human chimeras for the folks listening. Just Google it and find out your own information. But they've been messing with uh, cow, human, cow, pig, mm-hmm. body parts, ears grown on the top of rats. and So they've been blending well, flesh for a long time. Well, here's what's really interesting with that. Every abductee, talks about how they're being experimented on Absolutely. as well there's a there's a parallel there it doesn't make any sense right now I'll, but always poked and prodded and time. somehow always sexual in nature it's incredible it yeah. is and so there you have it uh there's that that demonic that demonic uh entity mm-hmm. has an affinity for this kind of perversion yes. with everything it's all yeah, genetics, 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 yeah. and I, I mm-hmm. think you know there we have this big technocracy that really, in a sense, rules the world. I mean, the the Facebooks and the Googles of the world, there was and the a, YouTube's. There was a, a a brother years ago, and I was I was maybe about four years old. And Lord, that was that's going back some, and he said it as much. He said, "Jose, the day will come where the natural sciences and the occult come together," mm-hmm. and we're seeing it right before our eyes here today. Yes, I, and I mm-hmm. uh, I completely. Have, you know, believe that. And, and I think that there's a lot of evil people in the world. You know, they, they think that Jeffrey Epstein was yeah. uh, the worst, mm-hmm. but he's just, mm-hmm. I think he's just the tip of the spear. And, you know, Satan said to God about Job, skin for skin, yea, all a man will mm-hmm. give for his life. Yeah. So imagine, um, you know, you're, you're in this breakaway government, uh, and somehow you can contact these entities, these beings, and get their DNA into your body, you can have immortality. Mm. And this sounds so far-fetched mm-hmm. and everything else, but you know, you follow that uh, that trail, and you you know, for instance, um, the folks listening, Google and look on Wikipedia. So this isn't just Baptist preacher. Um, propaganda mm. look up jack parsons who is the founder of nasa nasa not nasa that's florida mm-hmm. founder of nasa rocket technology uh and so he he was a student of lexter crowley the satanist he said he got and you can this is right on wikipedia you can look it up uh, he started the first church of telepathy in mm-hmm. Los Angeles. Telepathy is when you can move something mm-hmm. uh, through the spirit Telekinetics? World. Is yeah, that telekinetics? I think, it's a, I think it's called telepathy. Oh, actually. okay, telepathy, okay. And mm-hmm. um, so he started the first church of telepathy mm-hmm. in, in L.A., mm-hmm. and then he said that he got his rocket technology, again, Wikipedia, this mm-hmm. is common knowledge, by being abducted by wow. aliens. how about that? Yeah. Not all that off the beaten path, because when you look at Ezekiel chapter one, and you see this wheel within a wheel, and this thing is huge, the way mm-hmm. it's described, 
um, it specifically says that that wheel or that machine is controlled by the will of the spirit. Mm -hmm. There's a, they're, they're in unison. Mm -hmm. And in one of the testimonies of one of these abductees, that's what he said. He said, our technology will equal theirs when we're able to move our machinery at will, kind of like you move the extremities, like the parts of your body. Right, right. He said that's when our technology, and that's so that's part and we're, of that we're getting whole thing. We're getting close because if you think you get a prosthesis, you uh -huh. can get a prosthesis. They'll put that on, and your brain will learn how to move that mechanical the artificial arm. intelligence arm. Mm -hmm. But they've got this already. And yeah, and yeah. You know, so you got guys like Elon Musk putting mm -hmm. chi uh, chips in the chimps' brains, and they're mm -hmm. able to control um, computers and things by the chip. Right. And so you know, you and I probably we probably think the mark of, of the beast is probably a chip. It, well, certainly it could be. Uh, there there is a technology that's been being developed that'll do the same thing as the chip, but as a mark on your body. Mm -hmm. It, it won't. It won't necessarily have to actually go inside. The, 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 so it's. I, I certainly that has been one of the ongoing uh, theories, but I think it's going to be a mark. I think they're they're improving whatever it is that they already have with the chip. And you got guys out there that are really mm -hmm. really smart, like mm -hmm. you know Elon Musk. I mean, I, I don't know if he's half alien yeah. or something, like that, but anyway, <laughs> right. but uh, but you know he you know they want to be able to interface with the internet and then also interface with each other mm -hmm. by technology so you and i you know their their vision is that you and i could sit here and we wouldn't even have to use our mouths or anything that we would have a direct connection we can yes, interface right. with each other right uh through some sort of a device that we would put in our mind so i'm thinking this you know talking about the aircraft mm -hmm. I just imagine these jet fighters, if they could control their jet by a chip, mm -hmm. how much better would that be than having to use their hands or their arms or anything? They would have automatic control over their vehicle. Somehow, the, chip. the human race, they have a sense for these things, and they keep developing. Whatever is our science fiction today is tomorrow's reality. That's right. And, and, and we have that ability to think it. And so, but where do you, you have to ask yourself, where does the thought come from? Well, I, that's why I always think about Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Mm -hmm. um, this thing is, of course, that, in, that would include the notion of God and the gospel of Christ. And all we do is perfect it for someone that doesn't know. As we were talking before, had nobody explained John 3.16 to me, I would have never understood it. Right. But certainly... Uh, when ex when it was explained, then it was received because I just it was probably there. I just never really completely well, perceived it. Yes, as it is, and it's explained. And, and and I think that there are other things that. How do you imagine UFOs before you actually see them? Right. Where do these all these science fiction movie comes from? Plus the intermingling mm -hmm. of supposed aliens because. The, they're defined. They're 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 not that mysterious. Quite frankly, they're they're called the sons of God. They're a fallen angels, and um, and so what that term that term sons of God, right? And you and one of the things in the Bible, like if you study angels or just look up, get your concordance and yeah. look up angels, mm -hmm. you'll realize that typically when you read the Bible, you just read over or read past yeah. every time angels miss are mentioned. <laughs> yeah. But they're literally mentioned hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. And you see some patriarchs like Jacob, like, um, mm -hmm. the, oh, these are God's hosts. Like as, yeah. he, as he's leaving Laban, he just knows it's God's yeah, host. Right. And most of the time, angels, we... Mm -hmm. um, they're identified or they're misidentified as a person mm -hmm. until they're um, until they're somehow make themselves known that they are an angel. Absolutely. And so, being mm -hmm. called the sons of God, we we're talking about this earlier. Uh, it's interesting that you know Adam was made in the likeness of God, and you see in the genealogy uh, in um, in the in the book of Luke uh, that Christ traced himself back to Adam, which was the son of God. Right. So Adam was called a son of God. He was mm -hmm. made in the likeness of God. Mm -hmm. When we're born again into the family of God, he has given us the power to become the sons of God. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep. Wherever mm -hmm. you see the spirit of the Lord creating, especially an entity, that's why even Jesus is called a son of God. Right. Because the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. He was involved in that. And you and I, we... 
it's the regeneration, renewing and regeneration of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Now we're the sons of God. Mm-hmm. So that title could be for the guys that are on the, the Lord's side or even the adverse. That's right. Satan is a son of God by direct creation. In, in originally mm-hmm. that he was he was made for a purpose and, Absolutely. and that he was called uh, and they were called the uh, uh, sons of God because they were God's image bearers they were yes, to sir. carry out his will uh, in his fashion and in his mm-hmm. order and then at the creation there in uh, Genesis chapter number one Adam was placed in the garden and mm-hmm. he was to perpetuate uh, you see God bringing a ca- uh, order out of chaos and he places Adam in a garden, and he says, I want you to do the same mm-hmm. there in that garden. And so now we know that there's a bunch of fallen angels that are trying to hinder the work of God and fight against God. And uh, you think of the two, well, two major religions. I think of one uh, that was started in this area. is a fellow <laughs> by the name of Joseph Smith yeah. over in Palmyra. Uh, that's good that you go there. There was an angel Moroni mm-hmm. uh, and gave him the gold tablets. And in 10 years' time, Mormonism, imagine starting a cult, and in 10 years you have 100,000 followers. This is without the Internet. That's pretty amazing, That's Joseph right? Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, Muhammad, the same thing. An angel in a cave mm-hmm. gave him the Koran. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Galatians chapter number 1. Verses 7 and 8, yeah. Paul said, though I, though, or an angel from heaven, preach mm-hmm. unto you any mm-hmm. other gospel, mm-hmm. let him be accursed. And we know that there's a parallel between the words angel or spirit. Mm-hmm. And he says it again in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. We or spirit. Right. Or, wor- or by word. Right. So it's absolutely biblical that an angel will start a religion, a false religion. In any time people mm-hmm. come in contact, if you look at, uh, and I know that you've been... Um, watching a lot of these videos, a mm-hmm. lot of these testimonies of people who are abductees and come in contact with these alien beings, uh, is that they are anti-Christian. For the, oh, yeah. Uh, in fact, one, uh, and, and one, one testimony was that when he had that experience, he said, I've been a Christian all my life, and now I'm having second thoughts. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it goes against God. Yeah, I was God. watching one where the guy said he was going to be a Christian minister, but uh, when this came, yeah, it's always a spiritual mm-hmm. illumination. Okay. And uh, and we remember that when the devil reveals himself, just like his ministers, that he comes as an angel of, of light, light exactly to give illumination. Yeah. Uh, and so that is, that's a perpetuating work mm. of Satan. I think it's interesting, um, maybe just turning the corner a little bit, because what do you do? Uh, when you talked about the sons of God or angels, what do you do with uh, Matthew chapter 20, 22, um, verse 30 here? Um, and this is something that um, that I think the Lord gave me. Matthew chapter 22, verse 30, it says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So how do you square that with what happened in Genesis chapter 6? I can square it. Go ahead, go go for it. <laughs> There's a difference between the angels in heaven mm-hmm. and the ones that are fallen. Absolutely. Yeah. Plus, the ones that are fallen are the ones that had a will to do so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In other words, God created, just like, like Paul you, um, uh, describes in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he says, I would rather that you be like me. Yes. Yeah. Now, if you got to get married, fine. Right. But it's a it's, choice. It's, it's, yeah. So I believe that angels also had that choice. That's a good point. And I, they I had have, that choice. I have not mm-hmm. uh, heard that illustrated by that point by Apostle Paul. He said, I would, would that you'd be like me. Yeah. And he also talks about women. Uh, right too that they once they're married they have to please their husband but if they don't get married all they're going to do is please the lord exactly and that's why when you and i get to heaven amen. we're going to be at an elevated state mm-hmm. and we won't even need to be exactly married. so yeah. paul is provoked by his experience he went up to the third heaven right and yeah. we had that discussion earlier so he says man i'll tell you what there's really not a lot of time left yeah. i'm going to just dedicate this thing to this to this thing that is very glorious so if you can hang in there just invest all of your time in this, right? right. But so I believe that the angels, be, being a witness of all of this, mm-hmm. 
the ones that have stayed is not because they can't. Is right. they won't. They choose. Yeah, they choose when not they, to. It's not the will of God it, for them. Exactly. And so, as so as men can do it, I believe that angels can do it as well. And when they when they were thrown out, uh, they exercised a will that that the others had decided not to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and one of, one of the things and one of the speculations is, and we talked about this earlier, is throughout human history, there's always been interaction between the spirit world uh, and mankind. And uh, so for you know hundreds of years, it might have been some sort of imps coming out of the woods, but they're essentially doing the same thing or some sort of elves or trolls yes. or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here in the last hundred years specifically, uh, it has been these extraterrestrial beings. So there is some sort of probably dark agenda by satan manifesting mm-hmm. himself uh you know as as these creatures from the regions beyond have uh, you uh, i would imagine that you've probably experienced what i had throughout the years um uh, i remember a preacher once telling me uh dr sam gibbs he said to mm-hmm. me jose there are people that are as enthusiastic as you are about serving the Lord, they're as enthusiastic of serving Satan the same way. And they're consciously doing it. Mm -hmm. Because I always thought that, you know, people just Just live in total ignorance of their scripture. But there are people that actually, and and I seen somewhere, I can't remember, I saw a documentary on that very same issue. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a contributor to Fox News that was caught up in this thing. And there are people in high positions, I mean, actors and politicians. Absolutely. They literally worship Satan as you mm-hmm. and I go to church mm-hmm. to wor- worship the Lord, yeah. and collectively they do that, and they have their altars. So, anyways, back then when he said it, I thought it was a stretch, but later on seeing that documentary, it's true. So there is a connection well, uh, well, with think, the human race, and, and then think about things. this. Um, you know, I was watching a documentary about the Night Stalker, and I, I can't think of his name out there in California that killed all mm-hmm. the children, women, men come into mm-hmm. the houses and kill them. Then he goes to court, and there is a multitude of women mm. that are cheering for him and um, that are in love with this man. And then the whole time he's in prison, I can't think of his name. Wow. Uh, but he's getting letters from women in love. And there's, there's something about... Um, very evil men that mm. there's a certain kind of woman that is very attracted to these men mm. attracted to evil and so here's my point right is that um there is you know with these angelic hosts and these angel- fallen angelic beings uh there's there's a multitude of people on this earth that would love to intermingle with them think think about this um you know it talks about how God has put his bounds in the earth. Mm-hmm. You know, the three score and 10, mm-hmm. he's limited our ability. But we love to fantasize about being able to have uh, special powers and, you know, leap tall buildings in a single bound and stop uh, yeah. trains. And uh, how many X Men movies? Have they made? Mm. And everyone's a blockbuster sellout. Right. Why? Because mankind fantasizes about being some sort of a superhuman being. Right. Mm. And that is the end goal for a lot of people. You mentioned women uh, in the context of this conversation and the Bible, I think it's first Corinthians chapter 11 as to why Paul would not re- have them to hold positions of authority because of the angels. Right. He mentions that. And uh, so I think that that, that, that in and of itself is a reason for us to be on our P's and Q's as it relates to our it's an relationship why with God. Women are supposed to pray with, with their head covered. Yeah. It's because, Look, it says because of the, the angels. Yeah. The angels. The angels, yes, sir. And then um, the verse there in, was it Second Timothy? I'm trying to think of the, the verse there. Um, it says that uh, the Satan would lead them a silly women captive yes, yeah, yeah, laden can't. with lust, but yeah, it talks exactly. about mm-hmm. um, the air. Mm. You look at your notes. I'm gonna look this up on my phone here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I had that one. Um, anyways, uh, 
I think it's First Corinthians chapter eleven that they they need to be um, protected. Uh, for you know, I mean, they are the weaker vessel, and that's certainly it's not new. Uh, you had it in, in, in Genesis chapter six, and then again you had it over there, in, or Genesis, um, yeah, chapter, uh, and it's and it's bound to happen again. Um, and it's always an attack on the women. Yes, yes, it is. And, and so remember, so these uh, these beings, they're going to uh, someday, that the ones that sinned back then, they're going to be released again. And obviously, uh, they're unregenerate. They're going to do the same exact sin as they did beforehand. And they're going to be intermingling with the human race. Mm-hmm. And so this, again, this agenda... Uh, we don't know if Satan is manifesting himself uh, as aliens from another planet. Uh, and, you know, if there was a catching away all of a sudden, it, it would be easy. And I, you know, and I thought about playing it. I do have the technology here to play it. Uh, but Ronald Reagan is speaking at the United Nations mm-hmm. and said, if we were met by an existential threat from another planet, our differences here in this room would vanish in a moment and we would all come together. Mm. So just if you want to unify the world, we see how long it takes for the world to get together. Uh, we saw it in last year, 2020, during the pandemic. That's it took right. about, a, about a week yeah. for the whole world to organize uh-huh. because uh-huh. of a virus. Uh, and so just imagine if a bunch of people disappeared, how long would it take for the world to come together uh, to meet this existential threat, which the United States government has already admitted publicly mm-hmm. that these UFOs mm-hmm. exist. Mm-hmm. And um, how about this? You know, the only way to not get abducted is to get this little chip right here. <laughs> well, or Well, certainly uh, there, there, it's already been out there. When you talk about abductees, it's, mm-hmm. that's the whole point right there in and of itself. There have been people disappearing all along, and that certainly would 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 would, would fall into the narrative um, that uh, we're just taking these people away. We've got the power to do so, and who knows what how they're going to justify it. And and you know what? Uh, and I think we mentioned this before. Uh, this is now becoming uh, more of a public awareness, especially here in the United States. But um, I I've always kind of used to blame the government for hiding it and what have you. But um, I was reminded recently that, um, that uh, these are ministers of God and that God is going to control this whole narrative. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of scary in the sense that um, um, we really, the church with the awareness of this has to be ready. We're going to mm-hmm. be going here real soon because um, we're supposed to be gone. Right before the full revelation of these two mm-hmm. creatures, the, mm-hmm. the Antichrist and the false prophet. Mm-hmm. So that's a kind of a, a wake-up call, if you will. And that's what we're told to do, and to, be, to be awake, that we're not, we know of these things. First, right. first Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul explains it. We're not to be soon shaken right, or troubled soon, in mind. Exactly, but we should be ready, and we should be able to notice the signs in our day. I, I'm convinced, what, just kind of, kind of like when um, uh, Daniel he was he was counting the numbers of the days. Right. And he realized the prophecy in his right. day. He's studying Jeremiah. Exactly. And John chapter one also, Nathaniel says, Hey, we found him of whom it is spoken in the law of the prophets. Mm-hmm. So I think that prophecy is best interpreted when it's actually taking place in your day that's, than trying to right. guess it too far down the lower. Yeah, road, that's yeah. right. Yeah, mm-hmm. and as you're living through it, exactly. uh, it is gonna inve- unveil itself. Yeah. You know, and a lot of books of speculation have been written and yes. a lot of books yeah. have been mm-hmm. wrong. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, at the same time, we're to be vigilant, studying scripture, and knowing what's going to take place. That's why Jesus rebuked the Jews in his day. They had the oracles of God. They should have recognized yes. them in, the, in, in their day. Have so, you never read was yeah, one of Christ's ex- <laughs> famous yeah, sayings there. Absolutely. So I think we're in the same position today. I think we're able to see these things unfold uh, scripturally. And uh, we're recognizing it, like just like we recognize this whole COVID thing, how it brought us together mm-hmm. as a marker of these last days. Yeah, and it was it was just definitely a forerunner, you know. Yeah. And First John it says there's many antichrists in the world, uh, and. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, COVID is not real or anything like that. I'm not telling you whether mm-hmm. to get the vaccine or not to get the vaccine and things like this. But you see, you know, you never, Rahm Emanuel, 
Obama's chief of, chief of staff. Maybe so. Yeah. Was he chief of yeah. staff? He said, mm-hmm. never let a crisis go to waste. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh, and yeah. so evil people are going to use a crisis mm-hmm. to their advantage. Uh, and so you go to every store and uh, brother Tom Stiles, he said, mm-hmm. he said this, you know, you see no mask, no service. Pretty, they're just, all they have to do now is just erase the S mm-hmm. and put an R there. No mark. Mm. No service. Mm. And, and just think if, um, you know, if COVID, I think that, um, you know, it, it was trumped up uh, t- to be worse than it probably actually was. I mean, do you want mm-hmm. to destroy the economy to, right. you know, uh, yeah. but uh, mm-hmm. so, you know, th- that being said, what if, what if they said, listen, we have the cure for COVID. It's to get this chip in your hand or in your head. I mean, people would have been lined up around the block to go I know. and yeah. get it. And yeah. so imagine if you, there was a real mm-hmm. A crisis where, let's say, you know, several million people just disappeared. Ah, yeah. And they say, hey, we got the mm-hmm. solution. Mm-hmm. We got the answer. People. Well, certainly we can, yeah, we can play around with this all uh, uh, quite a bit because it's it's really a, a vast conversation. And um, the trickery, mm-hmm. Satan is so amazing. He's a liar. Uh, he's a murderer from the beginning. And he's got this down. He's been doing it for a long time. It, so, and and as technology uh, grows, so will it fall into his hands as well. Um, that's obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, going moving forward, as knowledge does continue to increase. Um, so, what is at his disposal? But what is God going to allow him to do? Well, we've got the scripture. God is going to allow strong. Wave of delusion. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And if it were possible, even the very, very elect, elect would be deceived. Yes, sir. And um, mm-hmm. I think, well, there's there's three ways to approach the devil. Uh, first two are wrong here. You can ignore that he mm-hmm. even exists mm-hmm. and not acknowledge him at all. Mm-hmm. Number two, you can make him, uh, you see a devil around every bush and give yeah. more attention to the devil. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know I know guys that yeah. are more interested in the Antichrist than they are in Jesus Christ. Right. So that's the wrong approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, or number three, see him everywhere where the Bible shows you where he's at. Sure. And uh, mm-hmm. and always remember about the devil is that he's God's devil. Yes, he is. He is his instrument. And so yeah. and so God has Satan on a leash. Mm-hmm. And so this is, you know, this is the important thing. You know, there's testimonies of abductees. There's a documentary, a very good documentary called Alien Intrusion. And um, I'm trying to think of the word after that. But if you look up that in YouTube, it is on YouTube. Full video should be mm-hmm. an hour and 40 some minutes long. Mm-hmm. But there's testimonies of Christians on there who were multiple abductees, who uh, they would they got saved? They have they have a testimony of becoming saved and rebuking these things in the name right. of the Lord. Yes, and they never come back again. Right, you know it tells us in mm-hmm. James: submit yourselves mm-hmm. therefore to God, mm-hmm. resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, these that's the that's the advantage that we have as believers. Um, no demon can possess you, mm-hmm. and I say that because you're God's possession. Well, you're God's possession, and I've been in certain circles of the, some of these. Uh, uh, cultists, they, they, they call themselves Christians, but in their churches, some of their people supposed to get uh, possessed by devils. It just can't be. They just can't and, have and that. And these charismatics give yes. way too much attention big to the time. devil. Oh, big time. So, you know, uh, just, just on that premise alone, yes. um, it's all wrong because Jesus is going to get the glory. Right. And that's our job. That's so, the work so of the Holy Spirit. So we're to let not our heart be troubled. Amen. We shouldn't be worried about this. Mm-hmm. And... Um, if something shocking comes down the pike here where it's just, you know, um, mind blowing, mm-hmm. we, we should rush back to scripture, see Absolutely. what scripture says. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't believe news media. Some people can go down a rabbit hole. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people are giving their lives to try to find Sasquatch. <laughs> We were talking about that. We're talking about this too. What's I mean, the point? you know, yeah. Sasquatch mm-hmm. has been on every continent, yeah. uh, but no one's been able to find him. Yeah. I mean, he, mm-hmm. you know, Sasquatch might be a demon being too. Well, th- so that's some of the speculation that they come from that world as well, right? Uh, so they just can't catch these critters. No, they can't. And I'll tell you, mm-hmm. as a hunter, mm-hmm. uh, any hunter worth its his salt's got you know at least five cameras out in the woods <laughs> and you know you got yeah. tens of thousands of cameras out in the woods then yeah. you got all these professional mm-hmm. sasquatch hunters mm-hmm. and and they're not getting a trace of anything right. and the funny thing is too with all the ufo sightings and all the mm-hmm. abductees mm-hmm. at least you would think that somebody if they're on a spaceship would like you know yeah. 
steal a instrument right or something <laughs> bring like something back bring something yeah. back please well you, you know jack you said it I, I think you just said it a little while ago uh we it's not something my wife says has said to me that that i have an obsession with this um i just think that now the church is getting ready to have the answer because mm-hmm. because when i brought it up years ago i was looked at kind of funny um sure sure you know what do you do yeah the, the, the Pastors going <laughs> to the UFO yeah, deep yeah. over there and that yeah, kind see, of thing. They're, I'm saying, thinking, they're, they're saying, stop, Pastor, you're yeah. embarrassing us. Well, yeah, and the thing is, this thing is going to come to light sometime, and mm-hmm. we need to be ready to have an answer. This right. has always been my, my my position there, and I appreciate the Lord for you, brother, because you're you're bringing some public attention to this. I think that the church doesn't need to get obsessed with this, but no. we do. We the, the Scripture says, have an answer. Yeah. And it, that's our job. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do here. And there's a danger for the believer. Mm-hmm. Um to to be and I, knowing you, I know you're not obsessed. It's kind of like a little maybe side, side hobby or yeah. something like that. You yeah. haven't given your life to. No, but I, mm-hmm. I know Christians, and you know Christians that yeah. get off on mm-hmm. some sort of hobby horse, and it's tangent, possible. absolutely. And as they say, on a hobby horse, all you do is mm-hmm. rock back and forth. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> That's all, you don't and we go anywhere. Be, and 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 we're told not to be entangled with the affairs of this life for a very good reason. There's a right. lot of things politics can entangle you this can entangle anything can entangle you but ignorance of it is not good either that's right Mm -hmm. yes and so yeah we we are to have wisdom and we are to know what's going on in the world uh but we're not to be overly well uh, god holds us accountable Mm -hmm. to understand the prophecy as it's unfolding yes that was his rebuke with israel yeah and, uh, you know, and again, I think it is important for believers to know the spiritual component Absolutely. of these uh, unidentified flying objects mm-hmm. and then also these aliens and any mm-hmm. abductee case at you. Uh, and they will even say themselves that there is a spiritual Big component yes, to sir. these beings. Yes, sir. And we understand that the longer things continue, the more they stay the same. The abductees will say that the communication between them and the alien Mm -hmm. and i use that because that's what they call them it's telepathic right and that they move the machine telepathically Mm -hmm. and um and you only get thoughts from three places absolutely yourself yeah god Mm -hmm. and the devil yeah absolutely and the fiery darts of the Mm -hmm. of the wicked one yeah and remember that everything that the devil says to you he comes to you as an angel of light he is the deceiver and unless you're illuminated by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, you will uh, be deceived by these fallen beings. Every, anybody that's paying attention to these things now, I'm talking about in the lost world, and, and the Bible says that the very elect might be deceived. Mm-hmm. They're buying into that. And they're, uh, some of these uh, Fox News personalities, they're thinking that, oh, wow, they'll have the answer to cancer and they'll... Mm-hmm. And uh, they'll have the answer to everything, to, and, 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 that's, and that's and that's the common belief. They're, they're looking forward and, to and this. And like stuff. anytime we have a trouble, you have yeah. see these people tweet now, like aliens, please come and help us, rescue us. Thank you. Yeah. And they they uh, look at these beings as for, so far advanced. Mm-hmm. And here's a rumor. Here's an inside scoop. Here's my uh, Alex Alex Jones, uh, you know, insight here. Uh, but the the technocracy, like out in Silicon Valley and stuff, they do. They're um, some of them are like are drug users, and they use like these these drugs like DMT. Yeah. And mm-hmm. now you have uh, DMT that's released in your bloodstream upon death, and it opens up mm-hmm. uh, opens up your mind mm-hmm. uh, and probably your soul spiritually, mm-hmm. uh, probably to get ready to, to depart this right. world. Uh, but they will smoke this or intake this DMT drug, and mm-hmm. they'll have these experiences. You can read about uh, these hippie types that go down to South America, and they'll all do this DMT together. It'd be like 50 of them. And they'll all have this common experience. These uh, They call them clockwork elves, which they, they look like, you know, if you, if you look at... Uh, if you Wikipedia, Lexter Crowley uh-huh. in his spirit guide, it looks like one of these uh, alien beings. I mean, the, it looks the same. Yeah. So these clockwork wow. elves come out of the woods, and they all mm-hmm. have this common experience together, and these beings say the same things to all of them. Uh, and so, is it like a chant? They well, they they Wouldn't take they, the, the they just thing? take this drug, and they're uh-huh. all they're you know they. Um, 
Well, you know, like children are more spiritually open a lot of times until mm-hmm. they're about three years old or yeah. something. Sometimes they'll have na- night terrors and mm-hmm. other things. Well, your brain will naturally filter out the spirit world so you can live in this world. And uh, and so, you know, these, you know, from a kid on, you know, some, some children up to five, six years old, you know, see, you know, right. spirit yeah. beings yeah. and yeah. things like that they more, have fre- their- more frequently than adults do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we filter all that spirit world out so we can live in this world. And I think that's how God would have it to be. And mm-hmm. uh, we, we walk by faith, not by sight. So you don't need to see these things. Uh, and so they, they do these drugs, these hallucinogens, and then they all have the same common experience and interact with these beings Mm. and the thought is a lot the breakaway in technology again remember jack parsons founder of nasa uh got the rocket technology he says on Mm -hmm. a ufo ship Mm. uh and so in in these um in these these uh technology centers they have people that are coming in contact with these beings who Mm. are giving them technology wow to Mm -hmm. to um, yeah, for implementation, and I yeah. think it's mm-hmm. to expedite. You know, the and knowledge shall increase. That's correct. The men shall travel mm-hmm. to and fro. Mm-hmm. And you think um, in 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright, you know, flew a couple hundred yards. Yeah, and it was. Look at him today. Yeah, uh, when you look at Ezekiel, um, uh, this machine moves. At the speed of light, yes. it, ca- it, it it likens it to lightning, and and you think about the planet in the uh, wheel inside the wheel yeah, is something that's yeah. very common. Oh, and that, that's that's some, that is a machine for mm-hmm. without without a doubt, and it's huge the way it's described. And this thing is, it says there that it moves, it goes to and fro as lightning, and you think about Satan, what he says yes. to and fro. Now the Earth is a hundred and almost 199 million square miles okay and he's moving to and fro upon on the, the face earth, of the earth on the face of the earth what kind and, of speed and, and, does and, he, I mean, and christ said that he saw yeah, satan fall as, as lightning uh-huh. so you know i mean these guys are built for speed man to say yes. the least yeah yeah and i uh, i think of daniel chapter number um nine is it nine where he's praying or ten Daniel chapter number ten, where he's praying, and um, Gabriel is upheld ten. by the ten, mm-hmm. upheld by the prince of Persia. Yeah, and um, it's Star Wars. Yes, it going is going on, <laughs> Just, yeah. and you know, it's so incredible. he, you know, yeah. so he calls for the mm-hmm. archangel Michael to yeah. uh, come help him because the prince of Persia mm-hmm. withstood him. Yeah, and so all this stuff, uh, it's the amazing. best way to fight it, it's amazing. It's the same way Daniel did. Yes, he did. Fast and pray. Mm-hmm. And we and we you know we have the Lord uh, we have ministering spirits as well mm-hmm. and um, all of this comes into play in our favor and the greatest of it all is that Jesus Christ will never leave us nor forsake us and, Amen uh, so and we've got some insight on this stuff the world is trying to figure it out and um, we're in a position to tell the world that you need Jesus Christ for many many reasons not only are you a sinner bound um, by your sin on your way to hell by that alone. Mm-hmm. But there are these, we can also explain these deceptions that are coming along the way now. Right. Yeah. And so we, Praise yeah, so we, uh, you know, as Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. And uh, we're not to be soon shaken or troubled mm-hmm. in mind. Mm-hmm. Our spirits are not to fail us for fear. Amen. That's what, that's going to be the spirit mm-hmm. of fear in yeah. the end times. Yeah. Uh, and so just the fact that if you uh, have strong faith in the Lord yeah. and your sound of mind and heart and spirit, you're going to stand out and uh in the world hallelujah yeah and you'll you be know, a guiding light whatever is out there jesus created it yeah yeah you hey know. any closing thoughts uh no i'll certainly finish with that whatever's out there jesus created it there are books that say that jesus is an alien nothing <laughs> that's else, right nothing like that and that is a religion man Absolutely. this uh, stuff and so it's great to be saved amen. amen yes it is hey well thanks for tuning in folks god bless each and every one of you and we will see you next time Thank you so much today for watching this podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you'd like to reach out to us by way of email, you can email us at pastoralthoughtsmail at gmail.com. And if you'd like to, I do write a blog, and you can subscribe to that at pastorjack.org. Thank you, God bless you, and have a great day.